Hi, my name is Eric Elliott. I'm the archivist here at the Moravian Archives in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Last fall, we gathered in our courtyard on a beautiful September night for our second annual Supporters Appreciation Night. There was music, good food and drink, a fine talk about the history of our place, and a new exhibit to be shown. That was last year, before COVID-19. So, while we can't gather in person to celebrate our third annual Supporters Appreciation Night, we wanted to share with you the highlights of the work of the Moravian Archives at Winston-Salem, work that your support enables us to do. Let's go to the archives, shall we? Hey, Nicole, do we have anything that uh... I can use to learn about what happened in this last year. I know we've got all sorts of resources here. What do you have about this year? Um, here you go. Uh, you got anything less dusty? Hmm. What's this? It's our Facebook. Facebook. Why didn't I think of that? Facebook, of course, that's a place where you get daily news about the archives. You can find their stories from our holding, samples of what we have, often with the connection to this day in Moravian history, news of what's happening at our archives with guests and events. You'll find interesting things about Moraviandom from other sites and other interesting historical things in the area. Plus, every now and then, we just put up some pretty pictures. So, a note to self, Archives News, daily, check Facebook. Monthly schedule events, subscribe to email news at Moravian Archives at mcsp.org. And for the big picture, look at annotations, our semi-annual newsletter. For our resources from our archives, memoir ordering, um, research, information about our churches and families, check the webpage at moravianarchives.org. Now, when you do check this year's highlights on Facebook, you'll find that in September 2020, Cherokee Nation awarded the archives the Samuel Worcester Award for the work of its archivists and translators in preserving Cherokee culture through the book series, Records of the Moravians Among the Cherokees. We published volume nine of this series this last year and will receive just this very week, our proof copy of volume 10. We released our second traveling exhibit on the botanist of Salem, and we'll release a third on the gardeners of Wachovia. We held our first commission retreat to review long range plans from the archives and continued trainings in archives best practices to prepare for our first preservation needs assessment in nearly 20 years. We met with international Moravian archivists to prepare for future work together and shared the ghost of Salem stories with a local television station. We gave public talks at local churches and civic groups, and before COVID, hosted tours of such groups at our facility. And after COVID, we've taken all of our reference work for our customers and our research work by ourselves and put it all online. In August, we co-hosted with the Board of Cooperative Ministries and the Moravian Music Foundation, the first online Moravian trivia challenge. And we'll try another holiday version of the same in December. We took our local restaurant meetings and the Moravian Studies Collaborative and made them into international Zoom conversations. In September 2020, I worked as co-convener with two Wake Forest University professors for the first academic conference hosted by our archives in a generation. Hi, my name is Grant McAllister. I'm an associate professor and Levison faculty fellow in the Department of German and Russian at Wake Forest University. Hello, my name is Ulrike Vitas, and I'm professor of um, religious studies also at Wake Forest University. It is a great pleasure for us to support this evening of fundraising for the Moravian Archives. Um, Grant and I have been co-coordinators with Eric Elliott, the archivist here in Winston-Salem, to organize the recent conference, Becoming American, Moravians and their neighbors, 1772 till 1822. And we are glad to share with all of you that the conference was well attended 
we had close to 400 participants and this really put the central role of the Moravian church and the founding of our city on the map. Uh, I, and I would also like to say that Eric and the archives have been uh, indispensable to our research, to our work here at Wake Forest. And we look forward to a long and fruitful relationship. Uh, the archives have been incredibly supportive for several Wake Forest faculty, not just Ulrika and myself. Uh, they've been very supportive for our students, uh, our teaching endeavors, and without question, our research. We would not uh, be able to do what we do if it were not for uh, Eric and the archives. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Johnny Pearson. And I've been working down at the archives, both as a volunteer and on uh, my own uh, work for a manuscript that I'm working on uh, for a, something over three years. It's been, I've had an enjoyable time and it's a good place to work. And there's a lot of information down there. I think the most interesting little project that I helped with was the uh, work on the St. Philip's uh, church records. It's fascinating. The pay is excellent <laughs> if you're a volunteer. So. I'm Janet Beck, and I am not sure when I came to the archives. I think maybe about a year. And I came from Mountain Laurel Moravian Fellowship. And what intrigued me about the archives was as an English major, I have spent a lot of time in archives and I really enjoy that. Um, and I also wanted to give back to the Moravians. So this married my interest. When I got there, the very best thing about it all was the people. I loved the staff who's, who've been so helpful to me and encouraging and the other volunteers. They're an engaged, caring group of people and that's uh, one thing that uh, kept me coming back and the other thing is I worked with memoirs and as an English major I love the idea of sharing someone's story. Hey Nicole do you have any numbers or anything we could use to show people what we've been doing this last year with COVID and everything? Sure I can come up with something. Thanks. In 2019 we hosted 137 researchers on site. In 2020, because of COVID, we had to close to the public in March and have only been able to host 26 researchers this year. From outside of the church, we have handled over 131 inquiries and we have handled 124 pastor or church staff requests. In April and May, when we were not allowed to work in the building, we hosted virtual office hours and created a series of how-to videos demonstrating how to use the services we offer through our website, like memoir ordering, specialty research, and publication and merchandise sales. Starting at mid-May, we began to work part-time in our building, and by the beginning of July, we returned full-time. We currently allow limited research appointments for those with time-sensitive research by appointment only. All visitors must wear a mask, have their temperature taken, and answer a standard series of questions related to COVID exposure and contact tracing. Things are quiet here and we miss our volunteers and interns, none of whom have been able to be here since March. Before we shut down, we had our biggest class of family history docents ever, and several Salem College interns were in to help. We look forward to our volunteers and interns being back with us and are working with several to develop remote work as the pandemic continues. We also continue collecting and cataloging the current work of the church and work with church administrators to gather records every year. Last November, we hosted tours for several pastors and administrators, showing them what is stored here for their churches. If your church staff or members would like a tour of our facility and its holdings on your congregation, we will be glad to schedule a visit as COVID 
conditions improve. We are grateful for gifts in kind of items for our collection from several of you this year. These gifts improve our ability to tell a fuller story of the experience of the Moravians in the Southern Province. Finally, we thank all of our financial donors these last two years. The total amount raised in 2019, $44,102, was the most we have raised in a single year since our building opened. This year, our friends have continued to help us even in these tough economic times. Through October 2020 this year, we have received 30182 in gifts to the Cruise Friends Fund and 6213 in combined gifts to our three other funds. We wouldn't be able to be here without your support. Thank you. I want to thank all of you who this year took the time to make a donation to our special fund for technology. Uh, we had a goal of trying to raise $20,000 this last year, which got interrupted by COVID. And still, at the time of uh, this speaking, here a week or so before our supporters night, we've raised about $16,000. We needed $15,000 to fully fund our wish list, so we're gonna do that. We've we'll making purchases of new computers, and uh, equipment that folks can use in the reading room and that our volunteers can use to create new digital content. Hello, I'm John Larson, Chair of the Moravian Archives. I'm joined with my other nine members of our commission in thanking you for watching our online support program this year. While I, we can't celebrate with food and music like, like we have in the last couple of years, we would like to share with you some of the good work of the Moravian Archives made possible by your ongoing support. You have already heard about the effects of COVID-19 that it's had on our daily operations, but those effects have also altered our financial support as well. The annual operating budget for the Raven Archives is $300,000 a year. Of that, support from the Southern Province has funded about one-third, while Salem Congregation has funded another third. This, a solid one-third of our operating budget comes from individual donations. A decrease in church giving over the last year has impacted the funding from the Southern Province and from Salem Congregation. As a result in September, our commission approved a $20,000 reduction in our budget expenses for the year 2020. Next year's forecast appears to be equally challenging. We must make a $30,000 cut in our 2021 year budget. We have eliminated all travel to conferences and training and reduced our expenses to the bare minimum. We are trying to be present and available in our ongoing mission to our churches and the community, but it remains an especially challenging budget year. We welcome any financial help you can give Eric and Nicole in their work at our archives this year. We have activated a text to give hotline number to make your giving easier this year. Just take out your phone and text the word give to this number, eight. 4-4-9-0-1-2-6-2-2. That's it. You will receive a text message back with a link of how you can make a gift right now while you're watching this video. Yes, we will still be offering opportunities to give through our website as well as our end of the year mailing donors. But share this video link and number with your friends. Let them know about our work and our excitement and potential. We have a wonderful resource here for many of our churches, family, and our community at large. So thank you for your support in the past and appreciate all your help. Twenty twenty has been a very unusual, challenging year for all of us. Around here, we're frustrated we can't see you. Frustrated we can't have you into this beautiful place and help you learn on our site about your family, your church, and anything of interest you might find here. We're frustrated because of health issues, people that have gotten sick that we know, those we've lost along the way this year. We're worried about money like everybody else is in this tight season in the nonprofit community. But although many days it seems like we're doing nothing but climbing uphill, 
like this set of ladder steps going up to the cup above. If we can hang in there together through this tough season, the view on the other side might be something special. I hope you join us this year, supporting our place and looking forward to better times after 2020. Thanks. It's about that time, isn't it? I'm Eric Elliott in the Archives, wishing you and yours a happy holiday. Merry Christmas!